Welcome to data presentation, uh, mainly on the standard outline in chapter four. I have titled this bribed examiner. It's not monetary bribing, but I'm using the way you present your data you should just bribe uh, the, the supervisor. And the, especially if you are on the, uh, on the edge of uh, failing, when the examiner reads this chapter, he should or she should think twice that uh, can I fail this uh, student or not. Um, so it's very important that you present this uh, chapter in a very, uh, in, a, in a way that shows uh, to your examiner that you have actually gone out there and you have met several people, you have talked to a lot of people, and you have evidence uh, that uh, support your, 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 your questions or your research problem. And you, it's worth uh, to be given a master's degree or a PhD degree. So that is why I'm saying a bribe at the examiner. Uh, just as a recap, uh, chapter one, I talked about chapter one entitled is the perfect chapter, uh, aging you uh, to make sure that this chapter is actually perfect, is written well. Uh, is, it is the first impression that you give to the examiner. Uh, if you have not, not uh, watched this video, go and watch it. Uh, chapter one, the perfect chapter. Then uh, chapter two, the decisive chapter or literature review. Then chapter three, uh, keep it simple, uh, research methodology. Then uh, I talked about chapter five, the final chapter. And uh, I emphasized the importance of making this chapter the final chapter uh, as its name. So it's very important for you to, to, to go and listen to the video. Today I will talk about chapter four, uh, data presentation. I will just talk more about presentation and the uh, uh, analysis. You are going to do step-by-step -step analysis in some uh, presentation in terms of quantitative. So even in terms of qualitative, there are so many modules that we're gonna do uh, just to show you how you step-by-step, -step, how you can analyze qualitative uh, and, and, and quantitative uh, uh, data. So let's talk about bribing the examiner in this presentation. Oh, it's very important for you uh, to learn the structure of uh, chapter four. There's a structure that you can present. I always encourage people that there's two ways to present this chapter. First of all, you need to divide this chapter into two. The first part is you'll be testing the assumption of your data. Uh, check for normality, uh, check for uh, mouth code reality. And the, when we are doing that, uh, we are actually uh, checking uh, or we are measuring the validity and reliability of our data. Uh, present data on a question based. That second part is now you now need to go and present your data, but based on the present data based on your question. Do not present data that is not answering your question. Your the data that you can you collect can actually answer 10, 20 questions. But you, you, you just need to answer the questions that, you, that are in your study. You don't need to answer the questions that are not in your study. It's not point, it's pointless. And it's also very important to keep it simple. It's very important to keep it simple. And especially if you are coming from the humanities side, because most of the humanities examiners, when it comes to, 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 to data, they find it so challenging. So it's very important for you to keep it very simple and, the, and to explain uh, your models that you are using. Why are you using um, a, a correlation, for example? Uh, you can actually even say uh, you are using correlation because you want to validate the questions. You want to check for validity and reliability, uh, depending on why are you using linear regression, what is linear regression. You just need to give, uh, yeah, you need to, to give a, a footnote and explain to people why you are doing those uh, uh, th those statistics, why are you running those models? What do you want to find from running uh, those models? So it's very important, keep it simple. So it's a uh, chapter four, you need to divide it into two. Um, the first part, you need to tell us about uh, reliability, validity, how you are going to enjoy it for both qualitative and quantitative. Then the second part, you present your data. So that's how you should uh, deal with this chapter. And always keep it simple, especially for people that are doing quants. If you have got some formulas that you are 
that you have uh, included. You make sure that you explain those formulas, break those formulas, uh, to the, even if your supervisor or even if you are from the science department or from the statistics department, try to make sure that you make that formula, a complex formula, try to make, to simplify it and uh, so that the person who's going to read can also understand. I, I cannot overemphasize the issue of reliability and validity. This is very important. You need to make sure that you spend time to explain your, the issues of validity and reliability for both the quantitative and qualitative. Um, in terms of qualitative, uh, checking for normality, and I will explain why do we need to check uh, for normality. Um, because if we, if our data meet the normality, there are certain models, uh, statistical modules that we are supposed to use. If it does not meet normally, there are certain statistical modules as well that we are supposed to be using. So it's very important that we we use the correct uh, the correct model, uh, depending uh, if our data meets normality or not. But however, even if data fail to meet normality. At times, it does not necessarily mean that we can't use some of the statistical uh, models that we use to manage. It just depends with the uh, sample size that you have brought in. There are three forms of data visualization or data presentation. The first one is textual or descriptive. Um, and this is mainly for qualitative uh, researchers where they present their data in, in, terms of, in terms of text. Then we have got tables and we have got uh, diagrams. So these are three forms of data presentation that we have. Uh, when you're talking of textual presentation, uh, you can, in, in today, you can make use of uh, ARA, you can make use of Python, you can make use of several um, um, more software that are out there to present your data in form of word cloud, in form of uh, scattered text, in form of paragraphs. There are so many ways that you can also show. And this is one example of, of word cloud. Uh, you can actually present your data from this. There's, uh, we'll go through uh, in, in some presentation where I will show you how to run your, your, your word cloud. I put a, a presentation on that. Then I also have put a presentation on the scatter text, how you can show your data in terms of your scatter text. But more important when you are collecting data, it's very important that you record because we encourage if a bad team um, uh, transcription uh, word to word because we want every word that the uh, interviewer uh, have actually spoken. So it's very important that you re you record. Then we have got the n-grams. We also go through that. Uh, there are certain words that always follow another. So like in the case of genetically modified crops. So every time when people talk about them, it's either they're going to say genetically modified crops. And this diagram form of a diagram is it's very, it's best to uh, represent those words that always follow uh, each other. Then we have got uh, these bar graphs um, to show the most frequent words, especially in your interviews. So we can actually present this in terms of R or Python. Um, you can actually show that. So this is actually a very good way uh, of presenting data. It is actually more more sexy, and, and your supervisors or examiners uh, will tend to fall in love uh, with the data that has been presented in that way. Then tables, yes. Uh, I have actually myself. I use the um, a PowerPoint. PowerPoint always give me good diagrams, you know, refined diagrams. So I think you can also try that in the. Uh, there are also advantages of diagrams. You can actually organize diagram your, your, your information in, in such a way that you can actually further uh, analyze it. But don't forget that when you are dealing with the uh, statistician, they want raw data. You don't need to give a statistician data that has been um, that has been pre-organized. You need to make sure that when you are giving statistician data, you are giving data to the statistician that is raw data. Okay. And tables, you can use it for your qualitative and quantitative, especially in presenting data, your, your, your results for um, um, maybe for your preliminary, uh, you're showing demography, you can actually present data, you can actually use the when you're doing your linear regression uh, results. Uh, you can present them in a in form of a of a table. Then you must make sure that your tables are well drawn and uniform. Don't change colors. Don't use red, white, pink. Uh, it's, it's it's not nice. You just need to choose one color. And as a tip, you don't use a color that is too bright, and also don't use a color that is too dark. Uh, 
I, I, I don't, I also discourage people to use a color like brown because it shows that you are not, uh, you're not, uh, you cannot make your mind, you know, you know, indecisive color. I don't use to use those colors like that. So it's very important that you use a color that is more unif that is more neutral and the uh, for yeah then also combine diagrams don't just write diagrams so many diagrams and uh, the many tables are necessary combine them um so that uh, you know whenever you are writing then you can always refer to that then we've got uh, the grammatic uh, uh, presentation we've got paragraphs we've got pie chart we've got frequency uh, diagrams uh, that way to, the frequent way that i showed you above is one of the example for frequency diagram as well then we have got histograph and don't use a diagram that is not necessary don't just use a diagram for the sake of using a diagram make sure that when you're using a diagram you have got a good reason why you have chosen that diagram then data visualization today in the we have got in, in R and python try that uh, i know as most of you or most people they like spss but SPS does not give good diagrams so you need to, to try uh, and also learn uh, python and and R. these are actually easy uh, software to learn if you if you want then this is a good example of correlation matrix in R. how the, you can show it these are actually four different diagrams that you can show your correlation it's actually nice and especially if you know how to explain them they become so 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 good that they are especially the first one uh, it actually shows us two things it's actually showing us this scatter how the data is the, has been is has been distributed across your your, your sample and the, in in the right part is showing us the figure which is actually a very good thing uh, to show as well this is the linear regression um linear regression how linear regression you know you can also use a diagram like that there's so many diagrams that you, that you can also use to show uh, your 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 figures that you also have known, including path analysis and all other stuff i should have also have included that but there are so many diagrams that you can use yeah so it's very important that you make you make the right choice when it comes to data i've seen most people they use a, a pie chart and the seven eight pages of pie charts after pie charts pie chart after pie charts or oh, small tables and uh, you know eight 15 pages of almost a similar diagram so it's always very important that you combine you choose the right diagram and it was too much of something you know it becomes so boring so monotonous and if you are on the verge of failing then your supervisor will simply fail you if you are just giving throwing to hear uh, histogram after histogram after histogram you need your supervisor or you need to examine to to actually um, um, uh, like your, your 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 way of reporting like your your, your style of of data presentation so it's very important that we do the right we follow the right uh, uh, um, the right approach when it comes to presenting data, the right structure when it comes to presenting data. We choose the right diagrams, the good diagrams that speaks for that speaks for us, speaks on our behalf, that can convince the supervisor, that can convince the examiner that you are with uh, a PhD or you are with a master's degree. Uh, thank you.